huge thing. And um, this group has been working like a team, talking like a team, and it's due to you and it's due to Peter coming here and helping us, and I, and I just can't tell you how grateful we are. Well, thank you, Cynthia, and you know, you guys are a team. You've always been a team. You've always, you know, had your had your people together, but things changed, and now that you have a new plan, I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, you can really move forward, and, and congratulations to you all. I'm just glad that we caught you on video and that we have that, and it can be shared with the community. Um, we have different parts of the community here, and I think there's other parts of the community that need to see this, like our city council and our county commissioners. And um, we, we need to find a way for them to see portions of what you had to say because it's not radical speech. It's such common sense and it's for our community. And I was just talking to someone tonight about um, tearing community and building up uh, uh, truth back into that community and how to fix that. And what you said were, were things that should resonate with every human being on the planet. And so we need to find a way to make that happen. You have all these doctors and health professionals who say it's a danger. So what's the question? If the doctors think it's a danger, my goodness, something needs to happen. There's only been one study done by the company, and the company says it's safe, but, you know, maybe they're right, but I don't think so. And certainly another study would help to either confirm or deny that they're telling the truth. And, and I think that's really an important piece. So much ammunition there to use that you guys could really lead this, lead this charge in a way that is realistic, which is honest, which is not stretching the truth, that's not radical. It's like we have, you know, hundreds of professionals who say it's not safe, and the only one who says it is safe is a company. So let's check and see. You know, the 200 medical professionals coming out and saying, you know, that this is bad thing, he says that's, that, that's just totally huge. And the other thing was, the uh, request for additional studies is number one on our list. We're developing an action plan around that. We have already thought through a lot of the things of how we're going to get that done. One of the things, and the papers have changed over the years, and they are controlled by the industry. This is what they do. They buy their way. They buy their support. There are certain ways that you can make the newspaper uncomfortable. You can't win them over either because you don't have money, but you can make them uncomfortable. They make their money from ads. They don't make their money from circulation. So you go to the grocery store and you ask the grocery store person to call the newspaper and tell them to stop being so biased about their reporting. Look at your newspaper and who's putting regular ads in. And then have people go to that place and say, look, I just spent 50 bucks here or 100 bucks here and I'm really angry at the newspaper. You put an ad in it. We want you to write this letter. Here's a model letter. And what it's saying is we want fair and balanced reporting. I want to say why we're here. Our history as humans isn't very clean. And if we don't learn from our, from our history and do a lot better in the future, um, we won't have a very good future. But there's a lot that we can all do. There's much good that is, is happening. We usually tend to hear about the bad news in the media. But there's a lot of good, a lot to be hopeful for, but it's up to us. I can tell you that I just spent two days with these folks, and they are energized, and they are expanding their membership and expanding their leadership and bringing more and more people coming into this struggle as we speak. And I think you're going to see a lot more energy out of this organization and a lot more faces involved with these organizations over the next two, three months. Because what happened in the BP disaster is they didn't put that safety valve in. It was all about a single safety valve, believe it or not. Um, and so on the Hill in Washington, D.C., they had all these hearings. They have hearings on like everything, and they used the BP thing. And, it, and it's all about, and, and it really is a sentiment of a lot of people across the country is that big corporations no longer could be trusted. 
big corporations are now cutting corners. And I think the advantage you all have is, is the idea that the whole Chile experience with all of those miners who, who were saved, and one of the issues was that mine was not really very safe. They weren't safety conscious. And, you know, why is this one going to be any different? And this is way more dangerous than the Chile mine. It's way more dangerous than the mountaintop removal. It's way more dangerous. So, so there is this, this sentiment across the country that corporations are not safety conscious, um, that they have too much control, they have too much power, that they're in too many pockets of politicians, because that's how BP got away with that too. And so, you know, feeding into that, that belief system that the American people have will help you. And that's how they use it and have been using it. You break the pattern because what that says to those who are listening, to those government bodies who are doing permitting or whatever they're doing, is that you're unpredictable. As long as you play by their rules, you're predictable. The minute you break out of their rules and become unpredictable, you have more power. They don't know what Cynthia's going to do. Lord knows she could get arrested again. She could, I mean, who knows what Cynthia's going to do? They're scared of Cynthia. They are. They are. They're scared of her. Because she doesn't play by the rules. So you need your science, you need your data, but don't believe that science and data is going to fix the problem.